a uh, Dr. Eduardo Salad has just walked into the studio. Uh, but you can imagine, you know, what he has he has been through the last couple of, of hours, especially with the, uh, this uh, big break as it concerns uh, MPOX, uh, talking about uh, U.S. donating 10,000 MPOX vaccines to Nigeria. So it's a lot happening. Well, just to remind you that the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, uh, said a total of 39 confirmed cases and zero deaths from MPOX have been recorded across 33 states and the FCT. Now, Progress Report, like I mentioned, reports that 10,000 vaccines have been donated to Nigeria uh, by the USA to mitigate the spread. Now, discussing this with me is Chief of Health UNICEF. We're super excited to have you, Dr. Eduardo Saladis. Good morning. Good morning, and thank you very much for inviting me here today. Thank you. You were away on leave, and you came back, and you started off with tedious work. How has it been for you? Well, uh, very intense. Thank you very much, Itohan, for, for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure. And I think it's important that we talk with the audience, right, yes. of some of the challenges, especially on health yeah. that we are facing. Uh, the country, it's it's doing a lot of efforts to strengthen the system, but uh, but still, we are facing many outbreaks, right? We yeah. had cholera, if you remember. Oh, I remember. A couple of months ago in Lagos. Now we have reports that again is happening in Sokot, in Jigawa, and other states. And now, uh, last week, we we wake up with the news that MPOX has been declared a public health emergency that's of right. international concern. Mm. And uh, I believe that's uh, that's why we're here today. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let's let's start off with um, uh, recent uh, discoveries. Now, I saw the video that you put out, uh, very interesting, also very educative. Uh, you talked about the variants. Uh, some people couldn't, they still do not get it. So I wanted to still break it down so they understand. Now, how is it different from the outbreak that we had in 2017? What's different about this particular MPOX? Right, very, very good question to start. So let me just start from the beginning. So MPOX, it's a disease that is caused by a virus, right? It's similar somehow to chickenpox, for example, on the symptoms, right? Or the smallpox that was already eradicated. Okay. So MPOX was discovered actually like 50 years ago or so in, in Europe, in, in some monkeys that they came, that they were like research monkeys, right? But what happened that at some moment, uh, there is like always a transmission from animals to humans, right? Because of eating, because of uh, wild animals coming to you. To in, in, in very remote areas, right? Mm. So the, the virus started to, to jump to humans. So what is different this time? So we're seeing two things. One is like the virus is already transmitting human to human, right? It's not now only coming from wild animals, from monkeys or whatever, but it's transmitting human to human, so person to person. Mm. The other main difference is like we are seeing a new variant, let's say. So then Pox has like, it's called clades, two clades or two variants, okay. uh, one and two. It, as you said, in 2017, we saw an outbreak in Nigeria yes. of clade two, of the second variant. In 2022 was already a global outbreak that affected more than 100,000 people in, all across the world. And that was as well clade two. So what is different this time? What is different is like in, in Congo, in DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, we are seeing a lot of cases of clade 1B. This is a new variant. New variant. Yes, that is more aggressive, let's say. Oh, wow. The mortality can be higher. And why is a public health of international, public health emergency of international concern? Because what we are seeing is that this variant already moved to other countries, like Uganda, Kenya, etc. So there is a risk that it spreads to other countries, including Nigeria. Okay. At this moment, as per our knowledge, we don't have this variant in Nigeria yet. We have the old one that is more or less endemic. So the, every year we have some cases since 2017. Yes. So I would like to, for the people listening to us, so A, yes, it's a public health emergency of international concern, right? It can come to Nigeria. So it's something to worry about. But B, it's not yet here okay. as well. So it's not to be panicking or to be scared, okay. right? So, and we're working with the government, with partners under the leadership of the of MPHCDA and the government to really mitigate the risks of, of the variant here. In the okay, area. now how does how does this particularly affect vulnerable people like children, pregnant women, and you know, in the, also talking about immune compromised areas, like how does it really, really affect these people? That's a very, very good question. And you are right. So as many diseases, um, when you get MPOX, if your immune system is fine, you are like well nurtured, you are healthy. Okay. So it's very likely you will have a very mild disease. 
right? It will not be a severe disease. You will have rash, you will have fever, okay. you will have sore throat, you will have pain, but it will go away in, in like, uh, in like uh, around two weeks, right? Main uh, challenge that we are seeing is like you are immunocompromised. That's right. Uh, let me just give some examples of who can be immunocompromised. For example, people living with HIV and AIDS, they, they are not in treatment. So for them, it can actually be a severe disease, right? That um, as well, let's say children, for example, that they are malnourished. So the defenses, right? Are pretty body, low. Are pretty low. So as well, they are at risk, right? And we are seeing actually that many of the cases are in children. And in children. Yes. Because so in these cases, I, I so that's why it's so important, right? To, to really prevent transmission. So let me just talk a little bit about how this gets transmitted Let's in the ahead. Mpox. Mm. Look. In principle, it's for close contact, right? For uh, it can be, uh, for example, for kissing, or for having sex, but as well, uh, if you are changing the clothes of someone that is sick, okay. right, or the linen, right, or or really like close contact if you are taking care of someone that is sick, but even if you are like in a close conversation uh, with a person, with a person like face to face, and and uh, we are close to each other, we are really talking you know, as well can be transmitted. Oh, okay. Even on the surfaces, if I am sweating and I touch this table or the mic when we are talking here now, and then someone else touch and I'm infected, this can be transmitted. I see. So transmission is not so difficult, no. right? It is, but because it should be close contact, but not so difficult. Yeah. So what is happening? That if someone gets sick and it's at home and doesn't get isolated at home and you have the wife or the husband or the children around, they can get infected. So that's why we're seeing so many cases in children as well. In children. All right. That's a, that's, that's a very good uh, answer. Now, speaking about um, uh, places where this is currently occurring, uh, what do you think is contributing to, you know, this very, very widespread occurrences, especially in this state where uh, you've seen MPOX surface? What's actually the major reason? Aside, we understand that, yeah, it spreads fast, but what's causing it? Right. So, well, the, the country more affected is, is DRC, right? And then we are seeing this new variant mm. going around quite a lot. Yes. And it, it seems it, it's more lethal. It has more virus in, in your fluids. So it's much more easy to, to, to transmit. Here in Nigeria, we are still seeing a very low level of transmission. As you said, I think it's 40, uh, 40 confirmed. About 39, 40 cases. Yes. yes. I think uh, we got one in, one in Aquaic Bone over yes. the weekend. So, yeah. you know, I think it's 40 confirming cases in, in many states, but but, but it's, it's not much, right? It's quite limited in a country where it's endemic. So um, we have these populations at risk that is, it's, uh, for example, people living with HIV and having sex with multiple partners. Mm, okay. This is an easy way of, of transmitting the, the virus, but as well, they close contacts. People people have also said that eating, you know, bush meat, uh, you may know, Picking up rats to you know to cook other things could actually contribute to. Of to course, okay. it, it could. Look, to be honest, uh, we don't know everything yet about this virus. Okay. We know that originated in monkeys because we discovered it was discovered in monkeys like 50 years ago, as I was saying. But we don't really know the ultimate reservoir what, in which animals we can find that. There are uh, maybe rats. Now we are seeing human to human transmission. Just think that that virus change, right? Mm. Just think in the COVID, if you remember, the, the first COVID viruses that we were facing is not the same as the last one. That's right. Because when you get infected, viruses replicate thousands, even millions of times within your body. Mm. And they transmit to other person and then to another person, right? So every time that the virus replicates, it mutes. It, it changes mutes, a, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, mutes and just keeps changing. Correct. Keeps changing. Mm. So there are many things that still we don't know on box, but clearly, yes, it, the classic uh, pattern of transmission was bushmeat. Mm, it was okay, like a yes. very classic. Very classic one. Yeah. All right, still classic FM 94.3, Abuja, the station that plays every song, you know, and we're discussing everything you should know about MPOX. And also he said, do not panic. Uh, it's not it's not terrible yet. It's still uh, very much under control. Uh, he is uh, Chief of Health, UNICEF, Dr. Eduardo Saladis. All right, let's talk about uh, the donation of 10,000 MPOX vaccines. Have we received it officially? Yes. So okay. yesterday, uh, maybe you saw in the news, Yes. Uh, there was a, um, a donation from the U.S. government, a very generous donation of the U.S. government to Nigeria of 10,000 doses of MPOX vaccines. Why this is important? 
because the, the global stockpile of vaccines for mpox is very, very limited. Okay. We, there are not many vaccines out there available. There are only a couple of manufacturers, one in Japan, one in, in Denmark. So there are not many vaccines. And we face a risk, as we faced during COVID, that let's say the rich countries, they try to hoard them, mm. right? Mm. So if the mpox arrives to, to the US or to Spain, it's a risk that rich countries, they want to, to, to keep the vaccines for themselves. Okay. So that's why this donation is so important to Nigeria. It's the first country in Africa that is receiving a donation. And if you, if you think, uh, Itohan, like the, 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 the declaration of public health emergency of international concern was done last week on Monday, right? mm. like 10 days ago. Mm. And in less than 10 days, we have yes. the vaccines here in country. So this is amazing. It's this amazing. is really unique. Mm. Um, vaccines are just a tool. It's not the only tool, right? You cannot say vaccines are going to solve our problems. It's not like that, right? But it's a very powerful tool. Okay. Right? It has some limitations, but it's a very powerful tool. So you put everything together and we do good, um, good uh, tracing of the new cases, isolation of contacts. Uh, information, dissemination of information, and as well we have vaccines, okay. access to tests, yes. etc., will be in a very good place to really control the outbreak. Now, who's going to receive these vaccines, majorly? Okay. So, um, there is a plan, there is a plan that the NPHCA has developed. Uh, they will be targeting a priority population. So, oh. for example, uh, health workers. Health workers. That they okay. are like really exposed of treating patients. Because of the close contacts. Correct. All right. So if you're a nurse, if you are a midwife, you're a doctor, and you're seeing patients. Uh, so, and I know, for example, you know what happened with Ebola, for example, oh, right? Yes. That we, we just were commemorating uh, the doctor that just passed when Ebola came here in 2014 right. to mm. Lagos, right? So, do, uh, so me medical doctors uh, and nurses and health workers are a priority group. Other one is uh, people that are immunocompromised. Okay. So we are talking about people living with HIV, but as well with any other immune disease that maybe they are uh, immunocompromised, even elderly people, for example. Okay. Important to say uh, this vaccine is not for children. Has not been authorized for children. For children. Uh -huh. it's, uh, so in this case, children will not be benefiting of receiving this vaccine. So this vaccine is only for adults as per the approval that we have. So for children, we'll need to uh, implement other measures, as I was saying, right? If someone gets uh, with, if you suspect that you have a box, first thing is to go to your health facility. Then it's likely that you will be isolated, even uh, either in the hospital or in the health center or at home. Okay. But if you are isolated at home, it's not like to have all your family members like you know, around. Having a good time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, touching you, changing the, the clothes. No, it's to be isolated. Right? Isolate. You can have your mask as you had in COVID. And, and then you can give, you can be fed. So, but isolate at home. So that's very important because for children, we don't have a vaccine. A vaccine yet. All right. So and now looking at it in a way where um, some children present themselves, especially for, you know, rural areas where probably a rash happens. And then these people have, a, have their local herbs that they put on rash to you know help to combat it and they might not know that it's mpox now what's 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 your take on it because i know you've seen a lot on the field and you know what's what's always your first advice look very good question and i will share with you uh, something that we saw in, in ebola in 2014 okay. in Sierra Leone. all right if you remember ebola started in in conakry and liberia and then what happened it was one case that one person that was living, uh, that uh, was living, it was an old lady, and she was actually a traditional healer. Okay. So she was called to treat a, an Ebola case in the border with Liberia. She got sick and, and she passed. 23 people, 23 women from this village took care of her when, when she passed, right? So in the traditional uh, ceremony in, in, in that part of Sierra Leone, you dress the body, you undress, you dress the body, etc. All these 23 people got infected and died. And this was for the, you know, for for going to a traditional healer with with, with a disease that was not known. Was not known at the time, yes. And because traditional healing, many times they have a practices that they are invasive, right? Like the scarifications, the plasters, things like that. Yes. So I don't know if people that they go uh, to traditional healing uh, are listening to us today, but I will say. These symptoms, like having uh, blisters in, yes. in, in your skin, having a rash, are very common. Can happen in missiles, can happen with an herpes. Yes. 
can happen with chicken pox. With chicken pox, right? So there are many diseases that are very similar to mpox. To mpox. So please go to the closest health facility. Talk to a health professional. They are trained. They know what to do. We we know what to do, right? So that will be my advice. If someone has family members on the village, uh, someone is doubting what to do. If you have any rash, if you have blisters, if you have sores, um, if you have pain, don't go to a traditional leader. Just just take it seriously. Okay. Go to your closest health facility. Try, try to get tested. We have an issue with tests, but as well, the country is receiving like 2,000 tests. In, in, if not, it was received uh, today. Uh, they're receiving tests very, very soon. Okay. So we are doing everything that is needed to really try to stop this. You know, the best outbreaks, you know which ones they are? The ones that we don't we stop them after one case. Okay. So this is our goal here in Nigeria. In here in Nigeria. All right, no, so as we begin to wrap up, is there a possibility or is there a chance that we can actually stop MPOX from reoccurring? 2017, 2024, in between we had a few cases. Can we actually say we've gotten to a point where we can stop the recurrence of MPOX? Is it possible? Look, I will tell you two success stories. One was, was when Nigeria eradicated wild polio virus from Nigeria. Okay. So Nigeria has done it in the past. You know, it's a very complex country. It's a huge country, more than 200 million people, a weak health system in many places. But Nigeria saw that can eradicate one disease. And it was done by polio in 2020, right? Of course, uh, now we have another variant of polio coming, as you know, right? A polio variant around. Yes. So challenges al always persist. But I think if this country has shown something, is like if something is possible, Nigeria can do it. Ebola. Ebola is, you know, Ebola stamped 2014. out. Yes. yes. I will tell you a story as well. Now that here we are among friends, okay, right? Yeah, I consider yeah. <laughs> most of the... I was in, in Freetown during the peak of Ebola in Sierra Leone in 2014. Okay. At the time, we had like people dying in the streets. Mm. We were like considering using the stadium as a hospital, as Liberia did. Mm. It was like really extremely tough situation. One of the tough toughest situation that I ever saw in my life. In life. I remember when the first, I was there when the first case arrived to Lagos. We were thinking, if Freetown, a small town, less than one million people, this is happening, with thousands of people dying in the streets every day. We we're thinking, what is going to happen in Lagos, 23 million people? Well, the Lagos, uh, uh, the Lagos success now is studied in, in the public health masters across the, the world. We have even movies about that. Yes. So Nigeria has shown, show, that it can be done. It so can be done. I'm, you know, I'm really an optimistic. I, I think we have many challenges ahead. I think this is a public health emergency of international concern. We cannot do it alone, right? We need to do it with partners, with the global community, like for example, getting the vaccines, getting the training, uh, getting the tests, etc. But I think uh, if that if there is political will, that there is. I think we can really uh, stop in box here in Nigeria. All right. So your advice is, since the vaccine is not for children, um, your advice, you, you, you spoke about nutrition, you know, very, very important for, you know, children should be properly fed with the right thing. So your advice is when a child presents with any form of rash, take the child to a nearest healthcare center. Right? That's fully correct. Yes. Uh, first of all, ensure that their child is uh, properly vaccinated, right? We saw as well, if you remember last year, a big measles outbreak and a big diphtheria outbreak yes. as well. And this is, and what we saw is like in 70% of the cases, so seven out of 10, there were children that they were not vaccinated. Maybe they have only one or two vaccines, but not all the vaccines that they are recommended here in Nigeria. Okay. So the first thing is like, ensure your child has the vaccinations that they are due, right? Uh, Penda, within, within the first measles. one year of life, right? Yes. Rotavirus, PCV. I mean, we have vaccines now to pre prevent diarrhea. Yes. To prevent pneumonia. Yes. Right? To prevent so many missiles, to prevent so many diseases. That's the first one. The second one, or maybe it's even the, the first one, good nutrition, as you said. Exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life. Right? This is, I think this is the best thing that you can do for your child. Right? To so ensure exclusive breastfeeding. But then um, a diet that is appropriate and uh, for the age. So this boosts the immune system. So mm. you are well nourished. If you got exclusive breastfeeding, if you are well vaccinated, your, your children is going to be faced. And if something happens, like a disease is coming, he or she will have the defenses needed. Right? To fight it. And then if as an adult, you suspect any close contact 
with a person with mpox or if you have rash uh, pain swollen and nodes right yes. uh, if you have uh, a, a rash that is painful that's very important you have blisters right please uh, go to your health facility and and isolate uh, based on the recommendations of your nurse your doctor or the health from or the health worker treating you all right thank you so much now before we go um the malaria vaccine september the big september are we still having that is as so as unicef our role is to bring um we we support all the process yes. uh, from um contacting the manufacturers to get the vaccines uh manufactured and done mm. then to ship them to nigeria okay so i don't have a specific date yet but yes we are still aiming that actually next month it happens right, yes uh, it happens so yes. we'll keep you posted okay <laughs> That's how we end it. Thank you so much. We've been have we had an amazing conversation with Chief of Health UNICEF, Dr. Eduardo Salados, and yes, he is a friend of the house. So yes, he's part of us right here.